I'm Ryan. And I'm Steve, and this is 60 Cycle Hum, the guitar buying, selling, trading, modding, fixing, breaking, reviewing, playing podcast. Yeah, we're uh, still on quarantine. Quarantine week two over here. Uh, it might yeah. be, you know, the first of the whole series of quarantine <laughs> episodes. Who knows? <laughs> They just they just like upgraded the the severity for lack of a better word today, uh-huh. um, because the CDC I guess is now recommending that like they recommend but they are not mandating that people wear masks, or, at, or just around town or at work. Yeah, like if you're going if you're just like going outside. Huh. Like if you're going shopping, they're saying like you you should wear a mask, but it's not. So it's like, I think the recommend it's recommended that you wear it, but I think for like actual employees, it's mandated. Right. So like when you go to the grocery store, like all the grocery store workers will be wearing masks now. It sounds yeah, like. and it doesn't have to be like it doesn't have to be like. I guess the point of it, it's not to be like a filtration mask, like in like the N95. It's just any kind of face covering. So if you like sneeze or right, cough, it's particulate. you just only you're only splooging on your own face, <laughs> oh, not gross, on anybody dude. else's. <laughs> well, you know, some people are into that sort of thing. So, anyways, this first ad was sent to us from Daniel Asporma. Uh, by the way, if you want to send us ads, either email them to us or jump on the Facebook group when we do uh, do a prompt for ads and topics and drop your ads there or just drop them in the Facebook group throughout the week and I will find them when we do a new episode. So this is a gold G&L that is on Yeah, this was a, bay, uh, I think. Yeah. Yeah, this was uh, made made in Fullerton, California. This vintage model was the second run of the first model of G&L guitars designed by Leo Fender himself and built under his supervision. At the time, Leo said it was the best guitar he'd ever built. It's a 25 and a half inch scale, seven and a half radius neck uh, maple with a rosewood fretboard. It has some mods over the years. The electronics have been replaced with passive Seymour Duncan pickups. The pick guard has been replaced to accommodate the new electronics. The tuners have been changed to locking Spurzel tuners. It's missing the trim cover. The body has lots of wear to the gold finish, but it's a great playing and sounding guitar. We're pricing it accordingly as these usually sell in the low to mid teens. Not a collectible museum piece for sure, but a cool vintage guitar just the same. I love it. Have you ever thought of GNL as like a vintage guitar? Um, I mean, they, they started in the in the eighties, right? Early eighties. Right, but I mean, like, so I think old, like mid eighties, and maybe this is a difference between like hand building versus. Sure. Factory. I mean, building. when we had a, um, but like, <laughs> go ahead. I think of like 1980s PRS as being something that's like worth chasing. I don't think of GNL as ever being a vintage instrument. Um, remember when we had uh, Buffalo Brothers up north as a cool guitar shop? Yeah, they they would have like some really cool old GNLs in, and when you see the old ones. Like there is like, oh, this is vintage kind of quality to them because they're using parts and they just have an age to them and a patina to them and a, you know, a look to them. It's like, okay, this is not a new guitar, but this is still a good guitar. And I think that's kind of like the Venn diagram of how we think about vintage stuff. Like vintage isn't just old. It's also, you know, somewhat desirable. And I think... There's no reason why GNLs can't be that 80s GNLs. Um, I mean, I look at this thing, and I don't even I don't care if it's vintage or not. I just think it's freaking cool. I love the the body shape. Um, I love the price. It's 600 plus 65 shipping from Connecticut. I love the gold finish that's relicking away into like that kind of like cop like that copper relic on the edges and stuff like that, the way like older gold yeah. finishes can, because the uh, I think the metal inside of it is starting to tarnish. Well, it's kind of a trip, like where the um, where the arm uh, carve would yeah. be. It's kind of like turning green. That's what I'm saying. I think it. I think there's you know there's like copper in the metal flake. 
finish. And as it wears, like it starts to oxidize. I've seen this, I've seen this simulated before on like relic style gold tops. But I don't I don't know right. if I've ever seen it on an actual older guitar. I also like that this thing's already been ravaged a bit. Uh, it doesn't have the original uh, electronics, and so if I was a if I was to get this thing, which I'm not, I mean I'd love to, but I'm not. Um, and don't nobody buy this from me. I'm trying to have more, less stuff. I'm just appreciating it from afar. <laughs> um, <laughs> I have to, have to put that disclaimer there now. Uh, like if I was to get this, I could do whatever I want to it and not feel bad about, you know, scalping out original pickups or the wiring harness or anything like that. Cause the original would have had an original condition. It would have had the GNL wiring uh, layout with uh, various different controls and switches and whatnot. And this is just begging for someone to come, come, so, come in and, you know, do something new and unique with it. So that's actually another thing that's interesting because the ad mentions that um, the pick card has been replaced to accommodate the new electronics, but I'm looking at the original mm -hmm. and I don't, I guess I'm not really understanding what was like, was it because the original was active electronics? So they just replaced everything. So there wouldn't be holes or all the switches. I work? guess. I don't know. I don't. I don't know. Because what the, the original, original like, describe the original to me, because I'm not looking at that right now. <laughs> I mean, it, the original is also a two humbucker guitar. They're like the soap. I guess they're like soap buckers. Okay. If you, you know what I'm yeah, talking yeah. about, where it's like more of a rounded design. So maybe it didn't fit exactly, and that's what it is. Is the yeah, maybe not the um, pick card was required to to help cover up certainly like the pickup mounts are not part of the original the original didn't have pickup right. mounts did the did the original um, pick guard have like then, the two piece with like the metal plate sort of thing the original pick guard is just a metal there was no pick guard there was just a metal oh, plate okay. with three knobs three knobs and three switches Interesting. yeah so that so they went for a full pick guard route i would probably try to keep the pick guard look, but I would do a different color pick guard on there, probably make a new cut of it, because that pick guard's a little a little yeah, funky. Apparent, apparently the F three hundred or the F one hundred is pretty rare. Uh, I'm not seeing a ton of um this one's six hundred. The, there is another one that's like original condition that's at eight oh nine. Mm, so maybe there's some uh, wiggle room on this. Since it is so yeah, molested. So. Uh, I mean I mean, they want 600 in good condition, 809 after shipping 900. I don't know. I don't. I don't see any reason why it would be unreasonable to offer, you know, 500 shipped for this. Like get. Yeah, it looks like the saddles. The saddles on this one might be not original. Like, there's mm. a lot of not original going on here. Yeah, yeah. The F100 is. I didn't realize this. I mean, the other side of it is like. I guess there's that vintage angle but you know this is basically the fallout model now right uh yeah i think the body shape is different like though isn't it oh yeah, yeah it is it's i mean i really like this body shape like it, it, it's it's got this just wide open big like strat horn look to it without being a strat like there's there's just something really funky yeah and like almost like this like manta ray shape to it you know i like it if I got this thing, I'd probably take the the humbuckers out of it and put some sort of, you know, single coil situation in there, something unique, you know. Turn it turn it into yet another another surf guitar <laughs> in my quiver. <laughs> it's a really it's it is a really cool looking guitar. Yeah. Um, I just it's it's again it's interesting to me that it's being like pitched as vintage, sure. but at the same time it's kind of like. It seems like it's at the right price. It is definitely cheaper than other listings I'm seeing, but I'm not seeing any of those listings actually sell. Right. So it's like, you know, these people who are trying to get like 1300, 1500, whatever, like mid teens for this guitar, they're not getting it. Because, yeah, yeah. Just because they're listed you know, doesn't nobody, mean that's what nobody it's worth. cares. Yeah. That's the yeah. I always see people online when there's discussions about GNL, so just like, oh, yeah, but the resale's crap on them. People say the same thing about PRS. And I'm like, well, you're telling me to buy them used. Okay, no big deal. 
Yeah, and I think I think resale on PRS, for, you know, is a lot better for what it's right. Worth. But like, like I. G&L. I think with PRS, the you know the problem is that they start out expensive, so you drive it off a lot, and then like you lose you know twenty five twenty five percent of the uh, the value of it <laughs> the moment you take it home. Yeah, I think GN GNL for whatever reason, like they make a great they instrument. Really the tr- I've played their their mainline stuff. I've played their tribute stuff. Like it's all really good, yeah. um, but but they're they've just never. Also, they've they've never picked up anything like negative about their brand. They've just never really picked up anything like that's exciting. Sure. I don't know. Like every time I've picked up one in the past couple of years, I've been like, man, this is like way better than it gets credit for. Like people need to talk about these guitars more. Like when I played the fallouts at Toman, I was like, holy hell, these are fantastic guitars. Like this should be like something everyone's talking about and including in their quiver. And then I played a couple at the last winter Nam and same experience. I was like, man, these are just too good. So now I've been looking at G and L's more and more when they pop up, I, I give them a good look. Um, so another thing is, uh, uh, in the past when I've picked up G and L's in shops and, and messed around with them, especially like the older, more vintage ones, I'd always like walked away thinking like, man, those guitars are heavy as bricks. This thing they've got a they've got oh, a picture yeah. of it on a scale. It's only seven pounds five ounces. That's not that heavy. Maybe the ones that I no, that's ha- pretty light. Have that memory they're, from were, were some it. other wood or some other era where they were trying to be as heavy as possible. Because there was a you know the time when you know guitar manufacturers were chasing this trend of like the heaviest guitar possible for sustain or whatever yeah. tone tone weight. You know yeah. If you want that heavy tone, you have to have a heavy guitar was the thinking (laughs) so thick yeah thick and heavy get that thick heavy tone so what do you think you think i should buy this oh yeah (laughs) should you it sounds like you want to i want this guitar i i don't want to pay what they're asking for it but they don't have it's only uh 600 and it's 664 dollars Uh, you, I mean, you can always send them a message and be like, "Hey, uh, what's your what? What's the lowest you're willing you think to go?" They'll take trades and a bunch of random <laughs> pedals. <laughs> what's it gonna take to get this one off the lot for you? <laughs> Listen, I noticed this one's been on the lot for a long time. Let me help you out here, <laughs> and because I need another guitar in my life right now, it just looks so cool. I like well, every part of it. Oh, this one. If you want to make an offer, uh-huh. this guitar is is uh, also on reverb. Oh, is it? For, for the same yeah. price? Uh, five ninety nine plus sixty five shipping. Right. Oh, there's only an ad. There's a message offer, and it, it's only add to cart. Oh. So this is being this is being sold by um uh, an actual music store in connecticut right. maybe i should track down the um, store and just call them on the phone and be like listen let's work something out <laughs> i'll send you a bunch of hey, pedals man. that will sell faster than this guitar will i mean that actually i could I, so it says they provide rare vintage and custom instruments mm-hmm. uh they have like they currently have 205 listings um they have instruments, you know, rare ones like this old GNL F100, and uh, newer ones like a 2020 Ibanez GSR 200. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, okay. That Vinted, that, that joke would have been better. Vintage and rare. It took me a second. I was I was just looking at they, the pictures, <laughs> and then I caught up to the fact that you have, were making a joke. Uh, they do have. Yeah, they they do have a bunch of pedals that they're selling for new. Yeah. Um, so actually, yeah, like maybe you could set, set, be like, I'm going to send you eight pedals. You send me this guitar. Yeah. But then again, I really shouldn't have any more guitars. <laughs> but then again, it is pretty sweet looking. But I shouldn't have more guitars. Well, you can you can have more guitars as long as in the process you get rid of like... a. Pe- I gotta way. get rid of if like you, a if guitar's you get, worth of pedals. The mass that a guitar takes up, that's how many pedals I have to get rid of. 
Well, the it's not about it's not about the mass. It's about the uh, the volume. Right. You have to you have to replace. You know, you have to make the space. So if 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 you have to remove a shelf, uh, it's not even actually. It's not even a vol. Yeah, it's it's volume uh, because you have to make up that surface area. Right. Right. And, and I guess volume. You don't really need to worry about volume. Yeah. It's more just about surface. I just need area. to get a bunch of bunch of uh, big so it's like, hollow pedals to re, to replace to uh, make space. Yeah. The problem. The problem is, is the surface area equivalent of pedals to a guitar is like forty pedals. It's <laughs> a lot of pedals. <laughs> like, ba- yeah. I mean, like, look at your wall. Look at your wall right now, yeah. right? Like, if you wanted to add an additional guitar to the wall. You basically have to get rid of what two pedal shelves, and then you could mount one additional guitar horizontally. Yeah. I've got the this cardboard box on the floor full of all the affordable pedals. It's pretty ridiculous right now, and that's maybe maybe it, the mass. But of is a, it even one the volume guitar? of a guitar? Maybe a volume of a guitar. Exactly. Is it even? Is it even one guitar worth of affordable? Right. <laughs> right, and be like, hey, look at this box of pedals. I'll trade you this box of pedals for one guitar. <laughs> <laughs> you just got to see how many uh, Harley Bentons he oh wants for uh, for this yeah. thing. All right, man. How are you doing? What's new? You have anything new? Uh, I don't. I'm still working. I'm still on the grind, man. So um, Has mo- have more of your coworkers not, not like, a lot new. like tapped out because they're sick. Actually, two of them came back. Mm-hmm. Uh, one of them. One of them uh, basically made it out of the quarantine period. Um, the other one, um, their roommate or whatever, got their test results came back as negative, mm. so they came back. Um, the one that shares I share an office with still is not back. Mm. How long ago did still they leave? Has a dry cough, like ten days maybe. Oh, you, get, you, you got four days. Like it's been at least a full week. You got four days until you figure well, out. Well, the thing if you is, is it. it isn't that? Oh, I yeah. do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I'm trying to decide if I if I want it or not want it. You know, it's like <laughs> you want it. It's you like that know thing you where it's want like it. you know. They all want. Well, think it. about it, right? Like, like the the if you're under if you're listening to this and you're under the age of probably like 26 27 like you never got you probably did not uh get chicken pox right. because that was my sister's my sister turns 27 this year and she got the chicken pox vaccine but but i got it and i have to wonder like now granted like these adults now live in fear for their lives mm. um but like i have to imagine like if you were like you or me our age and you made it to like high school and you hadn't gotten the chicken pox, aside from being in fear for your life, because chicken pox is worse for like the older oh, yeah. you get, the worse no, it I, is. My whole family got um, like was passing the chicken pox around when I was like 14, 15 or something like that. And my dad got it because he had never had it. And it took him out, like all the way out. Like oh, he yeah. was bedridden and just like miserable and couldn't move and it was really bad for a while yeah so there's just kind of there's kind of just like this small part of me that's like wants to be trendy you know wants to be part you of want to the, fit in wants to experience it you want to be like you yeah, want to you be know, like tom like, hanks and you want to get your pr agent to you know spread around that you got it don't worry you're going to self-quarantine and you can make yourself sound like a little hero you know it's like it's kind of like I, I didn't do it, but I'm, I'm a registered independent and everyone, you know, when there's a sensational, a particular sensational candidate, like I do have the option, uh, particularly like with Democrats and I, I, I've, you know, the, the Democrats have an open primary in California. So even though I vote independent or I'm registered as an independent, like nonpartisan voter for the primaries, I do have the option to like jump into the democratic primary if I feel strongly about any candidate and be like, I'm going to vote for this person. Mm. But the other side of that is if there's someone of like historical significance, you know, or whatever, like, like I could, I could have 
re-registered like a year ago as a Republican just to vote for Trump just in the primary, mm. which doesn't matter anyway, right? right? And just so it, like uh, forty years from now, I'd be like, yeah, I, I voted for Trump. It was it was a it was a hoot. <laughs> it was funny. Yeah, I did funny. I joke. did it as a joke. Like, so it's almost like it, I mean, obviously, like it's getting more serious. Oh, sure. Um, the whole coronavirus thing is getting more serious, but well, so, someone, there's still like a there's a at least yeah. Someone in a in a band that I care very uh, deeply for died this past week. Uh, it's not one of those one of those yeah. bands where I've ever like spent the time to go learn the names of the members of the band or you know any of those dynamics. And I don't remember the guy's name, but uh, uh, Fountains of Wayne. His name is Adam Adam Schlesinger. Yeah, Fountains of Wayne is, is a huge band for me. Like I owned. Uh, two or three of their CDs over my lifetime, and oh, yeah? I I wore them out. I completely wore them out. Like that, it, Fountains of Wayne was on heavy rotation in my car when I was a teenager and in college. Like that was really important music to me, and it sh- it shaped me in a lot of ways and how I think about music. And uh, I mean, it's it's crazy to think that you know this thing that you know we're we're talking lighthearted about it right now but i mean it is it's taking people out it's it's a real thing i'm all i'm actually always a little bit sad like how many people don't remember their first album i haven't listened to all of it but like i'll talk to people and they'll oh, be yeah. like oh yeah fountains of wayne I'll be, like, Mom. I'll be like oh yeah sing to sing to the bottom mm-hmm. and they're like no like what no i, I only know stacy's mom I'm like that song that song's awful well, here's i was thinking about I it because I, I i'm not a stacy's mom for us i'm not a stacy's mom right. fan i guess Here, here's the thing i was thinking about it because i was i was listening to a bunch of their music like going back and uh i wasn't listening to stacy's mom but i was thinking about it like if you if you listen to stacy's mom in context of the rest of their music it hits different. It just does. Like, because the rest of their music is very kind of like, kind of tender and introspective and a lot of like, kind of whimsical storytelling and whatnot, where if Stacy's mom is your only interaction with that band, your only point of reference for the band, you're like, oh, these guys are just like, kind of skeezy, like, like MILF hunters or something like that, you know? And that's, right. that's well, it, totally it like not that, the direction like, that they would come from as as songwriters. Like it's it's, it's it's a lighthearted, like whimsical story song. Right. Well, and that song also, I think, I felt like it hit what it hit in two thousand three. Um, I feel like that song just had like heavy, um, uh. Like there was kind of like this mini nostalgic moment right there. Bowling for Soups 1985 came out the next year. And, and in my head, those sure. two songs are kind of like, they're not the same th- song. It didn't help that like Stacy's mom has Rachel Hunter in it, who was like a supermodel from like the 80s right, or right. whatever. So there's just like this whole moment of, um, of kind of like these like, alt rock and punk bands doing like 80 throwback yeah, yeah. kind of things um i think they just kind I think of with like stacy's mom they the were moment. just trying to be as weezer as they could right no and, and i i uh i definitely see that but i i think i think that the, that whole thing there was definitely a this just this moment of of oh these guys are singing about being like being into older women but all of those older women were like the hot thing sure you know in the, in 80s, the 80, yeah. late late 80s early 90s or whatever yeah, yeah. i don't know that if if you want to go i'm talking to the listeners right right now not you steve uh, if you want to go and like listen to songs that i think of when i think of fountains of wayne go listen to uh radiation vibe go listen to survival car go listen to hey julie I mean, of course, uh, Sink to the Bottom was their radio hit before Julie's Mom. I, th- I don't remember when that came out, mid-90s or something like that, but uh, it's a great song as well. Yeah, I think... But 
I want to say that came out um, in like 90. Um, 96, 97. That sounds about right. I'm, 1996. That was one of, those, one of those songs that came out right when I was starting to learn to play guitar. And it was something that I learned how to play yeah. because it was, you know, on the radio. I liked it. It was easy to play. Uh, it was a good introduction to, you know, some bar chords and stuff like that. Uh, yeah. I mean, Fountains of Wayne was right there with me when I started getting into all this stuff. So, I mean, I like I, I like all that kind of like power pop kind of stuff that came out of the mid to late 90s. You know, Fountains of Wayne and, you know, Owsley and Dandy Warhols and, and all that sort of stuff. So... For sure. You got anything new, man? Um, yeah, I've been doing all sorts of new stuff, but I, I, you know, people who watch, you know, the rest of the YouTube videos know what I'm up to. <laughs> I don't need, I don't need to go over all my projects here. <laughs> yeah. Uh, all I'm going to say is, um, good luck with that strat, <laughs> I guess. Yeah. It's, I kind of wish I trip. could, I, I kind of, you know, the way the weather the weather was on an upswing this week so part of me like kind of wishes i could get um get coroned for for at least a little bit because maybe i would actually get some work done on the uh ibanez yeah, yeah. that i body that well, i have you, you, I, I stripped it like two years two years ago it's like every every couple of years i find this moment where i actually get some time to do some work yeah. on it well if i find a good cheap way to do and like easy, quick, cheap way to do this refinishing on the strat, which is really what I'm trying to shoot for, is like an easy, cheap, kind of visually effective way to refinish a, uh, a bare wood guitar. That's it's not gonna look commercial, but it'll look interesting and, and be kind of functional. Maybe uh, I can do the same treatment mm -hmm. on that thing for you and do a video of it. I don't know. No big, no no, big promises you know, there. I've got, it, I've got an idea. I've got paint. I know what I wanna mm. do. Um, I just haven't finished. I just, you know, the, one of the issues is I got to figure out how to like, if I'm, how to string it up in my backyard, because if I can't like do a dangle with it, right. um, then basically I'm going to have to like paint it and spend just a lot of time sanding it back to smooth, yeah, yeah. which I, you know, I may end up having to do no matter probably what. Will. So, um, it, I'm just I'm at a point where I'm looking at I'm like do I just do like some really light coats on the front and on the back and if I do it light enough then maybe I can avoid uh, having to do like some like major major sanding mm -hmm. but the way my yard is set up I, it's just like pretty much basically I'd have to run a rope from one fence to the other in order to like dangle a body like a clothesline the way that like I know you're supposed to do it yeah and it's it's just not very effective yeah. because it's like after you do that, then you have to let it sit out there for hours to dry off and like, and like settle and whatever. Get, uh, so just I don't get, know. Uh, I need to figure like a out. microphone boom stand and hang a counterbalance off of one side of it. Oh, that's a good yeah. idea. And hang the guitar that way. I've got a, I at least have a short mic stand. I thought I had a tall mic stand somewhere too. And if you, I've, I got, actually, I've got junk stands over here. You could borrow next time. Uh, we're allowed to be out of the house and see people. You could borrow a, a boom stand from me. Yeah. Get it all painted up. I was actually super, super, super bummed because I was going to put my desktop microphone on a, on a mic stand. And uh, so I wouldn't, so I could be a little more natural in my uh -huh. setup um, or at least differently natural, I guess. And uh, the little clip portion of the, the road doesn't fit onto it's not like a standard oh. adapter it's like it's it's closer to like a shoe adapter in oh, size um uh, so now i'm hoping that the uh the stand that i ordered actually fits yeah or you'll have to get creative um, in some sort the of boom way. arm i ordered i'm sure there's some kind of like adapter yeah yeah it's uh, called duct tape that would work but <laughs> I'm I'm hoping I don't have to duct tape it together. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, did you listen to the album? I did. Are we gonna talk yeah, about yeah. it? Yeah, we uh, uh, we take suggestions for our, our album uh, reviews from the Inner Circle. Ben Fur suggested Who? this one. 
Ben, Ben, I think it's fair. Fair, Ben Fair. I think it's pronounced fair. It's F E H R. Um, yeah, he's he suggested Nickelback's "Silver Side Up." I think this was like an attempt to torture. Um, but I, I have to say, um, I did not say anything nice about this album. Um, but I think like if I would have purchased this when it came out in like two thousand three or uh-huh. whatever maybe like i won't say i would have been like super into it uh because i was like pretty standard evangelical christian at that sure, time sure. Um, it's not like it's a dirty album though i think i would have been it's not dirty it's just you know you, can, you don't want to listen to it. i don't you want to just get into it i actually took notes on almost every song yeah this I, week. Saw, I saw your notes <laughs> i didn't read them but yeah yeah let's just get into it Let, tell me what you think about it I'm curious. Um, so, so just to open it, you know, uh, Courtney Barnett last week. I don't remember what her first song was, but I know for like Guns N' Roses and for um, Van Halen, you know, we both made this note that like these albums open like taking no prisoners. Right, like, right. They're just they're going well, for it. This it's party from the opening. Yeah. Rip. This album opens with this open hi hat deal that. I never liked it when we were in bands and our drummers would be like, hey, I'm going to do this open hat right, thing. Right. Like, there's something about the open hat that just is abrasive to me in all, most contexts. Yeah. You like a nice closed um, hat. Close that hat, says Steve. Yeah, yeah. I want I want that hat to be, like, nice and yeah, tight. Yeah, tight hat. Uh, really focused. <laughs> um, but, uh, but, yeah, just from the beginning, I'm like, oh, here we go. Like, because it just felt like it was trying to be... 80s but there was something about the production that just wasn't there and then um i wrote uh there's a lyric he's drunk again dot 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 that's why he's listening to this album and then i realized i'm writing jokes about a song that's about domestic violence and i felt a little bit bad about it happy song but it's like man like like you're opening i mean I guess write your album about whatever you want to write about. And I don't know how critical I can be because, you know, I, a lot of the bands I listen to have covered some pretty heavy topics, but this album in general, like, I think you are like six songs for either the fourth song or the sixth song is the first song. That's like not completely about domestic violence right, right. in one way or another. Um, or about like a breakup or just like this album across the board is just, I think every, I think every song is a downer. I don't know if there's a single song on here that's not a downer. Um, like halfway through, I'm just thinking like, like what is, what's Chad Kroger's story besides being Canadian and being married to Avril Lavigne later? Like what's this dude's deal? Because I always thought he was a douche, but like maybe there's a reason for that. I don't know. I don't. I don't know anything about him being a, a good guy or a bad guy or anything like that. I just know that people trash on this band every chance that they get. And honestly, I mean, we've all heard a bunch of these songs because they've been in every single movie end credit for a decade, and they get played everywhere that you go. And I think that's part of the reason why people uh, are over Nickelback or, or diss on them is just, they're so pervasive. You can't, their, their own success has, as soured right. people against them. Um, where was it going with this? But uh, I, I, I will say to that, po- go ahead. I will say to that point, uh, Nickelback in my head, they've got like a couple different, so- a couple songs from other albums that are like really, really similar. Right. I didn't. I felt like this album, even though it's very like early two thousands hard rock, it's it's not the same song ten times. You know, there right. is some variety. There's definitely like with any genre piece, it's similar enough. But I didn't feel like it had the bleeding from one song to another of like some of the other albums that we've talked about. Oh sure, it it it, it definitely that's like a, represented. That's a nice thing I'll say about them. Okay, what, what was that? 
So that's a nice sure, thing sure. I'll say about it's, Nickelback. It's not like one of those. Like, this album wasn't completely. It's awful. not like one of those '80s albums or or whatever, uh, where there's two hits on it and the rest are kind of just like throwaway. Like he, like this band has a consistent thing they're going for, song to song. Like it didn't feel like oh this one's suffering uh, versus another one. Like it's it's all kind of the same songwriting and you know production value throughout. Um, my kind of takeaway from it was that there's there's really nothing wrong with any of it. It's actually like pretty good for what it is, but I think it's a victim of a few things. First of all, it's a victim of the genre that it is because it's going for this whole, uh, just the sound of the band is going for this whole uh, like early 90s uh, gruff grunge, post grunge sort of thing like, Pearl Jam, Bush, uh, you know, bands like that. Uh, but it's just right. too late. It's too late to the party. And then at the same time, it's too successful. And because there was nothing else like that quite going on, because it was so late to the party, yeah. it just got beat to death because the radio stations and every, anyone looking to put, you know, like a hard rock sounding song in a soundtrack or whatever just defaulted to it because it was available and it was just so commercially friendly and, you know, safe while still sounding like pretty yeah. heavy and pretty like hard rock, but then not so hard rock that it's going to scare, you know, the moms in the audience or whatever. Um, right. And then there was another do, do two point any, uh, I was going to make you, on it. It was just, just, it's sure what, the, what people criticize Nickelback for a lot is just being really overly polished kind of like high produced music and i think it does suffer from that like yeah. it is very very polished it is lacking uh a sense of like like danger you know like a, like to me like a really fun rock song feels like the wheels might come off the car it's just like shimming to pieces yeah like at no point does it feel like any of the songs are in danger of themselves. It doesn't feel like any of the instruments well, or the, the performers are in danger of, you know, of, of their wheels coming off. It's, it's just very tight, very produced, very polished, uh, which is kind of like saying it's too good, <laughs> which is a yeah, hell of no, a criticism. I, I, um, the, uh, I got to, um, I got to track eight, um, which is called Where Do I Hide? And I, I, my note on that one was I like this theme because it's kind of like that song kind of has this like outlaw on the run theme, you know, where do yeah, I yeah. hide? But then I said the music, the music still sounds like it was made by robots. Sure, sure. I mean, I, th I th you know, and, and I think I think that was definitely a, a theme because of the processing, because it's it's not risky, you know, to make you make like that. um um, grunge comparison. It's like there was no, there's no plowed here. Right. There's, like plowed is one of those songs from the '90s that I always am expecting. Like, even though I've heard that song a thousand times, like I'm still waiting for something to explode. Yeah, totally. During I mean, you that listen, song, you listen to Soundgarden from the uh, from the '90s, and it 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 sounds like. How did how did they even record this without you know the band falling apart or whatever? Like you get that sense of of danger yeah. in the music, uh, and there's just not that sense of danger in this. Uh, but I I do think like still there's the 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 bad rep of this band comes from them just coming in too late. Like if if Nickelback had been on the scene uh, at the right time, you know the singer could have been in Temple of the Dog as you know a cameo. In, in that sort of setup. Yeah. Uh, he could have been, you know, sharing tracks with Chris Cornell on something and it would have made total sense. I think the uh, the the songwriting well, would have been a bit different. The production would be a lot different because uh, he would have been still recording onto tape instead of recording on, you know, on a computer in a studio somewhere. And uh, it would have been a little bit more raw, I think. And I, I think that that style of music really benefits from a certain like raw unpolished aspect and when you make an album like that almost a decade too late and 
it's just hyper polished and there's there's no one else in the market to really like prop up that genre anymore like i th- i think it just hits weird but then at the same time they're they're hugely successful so they did something right and i i right. if i was them i would yeah. just keep doing what they're doing and i would never stop it's well, I mean, I think maybe that was part of the problem is because like I, I I'll say like okay, this album came out in two thousand one, or this the this uh the big single off this song came out in two thousand one, uh, which was the second track, "How You Remind uh-huh. Me." Um, good grief, that is dark. This album was released on September eleventh. It seems like a lot of stuff was Yikes. released on or around like every, like every like there's all these like cultural touchstones that came out right about then maybe that's why certain maybe that's why this album like does have the traction that it does or did have the traction that it did because it was just right place right time and it kind of burned into everyone's memory as well as, as something that makes you feel a certain way and that's kind of powerful you know i i didn't i did not you know holistically so i've always actually heard the album before this one is really uh-huh. good uh, i came out a, a couple years earlier i didn't h- hate this as much as i expected to i actually didn't really hate it at all it was just kind of there um i will say you know well then the note that i made on this for the set for the for the hit single which was how you remind me i said this is the song that launched a thousand guitar players and sold a million chorus right um and I mean, they they took a song. I think how you. I I mean, when I was I was seventeen, I learned how to play how you remind me. I played oh, that you? song, you know, for my friends and people sang along. You know, um, yeah. It was like I think three. It's like three chords and and it was a it was a jam. Sure. You know, people everybody knew the words because it was just the same words over and over <laughs> again. <laughs> yeah. No, I bet I bet that but, if I was uh, but if I know, was th- still busking. If I went down to PB and started playing that song, I bet people would stop and sing along drunkenly. Because it's one of those songs that just everybody oh, knows. Yeah. Like you just know it. Like even if you've if you've never consciously listened song... to the song, you've heard it enough times in the background that you just know that song now. That is a song where the first like three people would walk by and be like, Oh, nickelback sucks. And the fourth dude would be like, Here's twenty dollars. Right, right. <laughs> Well, not anymore because no one carries cash. It's all Venmo now. And good luck getting someone to then Venmo like, you what? on the street. Yeah, you got you have you need a cardboard sign that says my Venmo right. is and then twenty dollars yeah. into your Venmo. And then you need to like have like ten Venmo accounts that are all similar spelling because people are doing it drunk. <laughs> you have to cast a wide net and busking these days. Oh my gosh. <laughs> You just need a little like cards. You need a iPad with a square. Yeah, chip. yeah, yeah. Totally. <laughs> you got any other thoughts on this album? Nah, I don't think so. Uh, well, I'll say that. I mean, I get it. I get why people dog on this. I get that they're sick of it. I, I get there's you know it's pervasive. Like that Nickelback is you know uh, my my Nickelback is Imagine Dragons. I never want to hear Imagine Dragons again. Uh, kind of in the same vein of of overplayed and probably too good and too polished and so it just hits me weird um but at this point like i think it's just dumb to like be like oh nickelback sucks oh just oh the worst band it was probably nickelback like no they're not they're every every well, every no, part that's of this, only because every, that's every only part be- of this album was completely competent and there was nothing wrong with it it's just there's reasons why people don't like it anymore and that's fine too well, no, the whole reason that Nickelback is no longer the worst band is, as you pointed out already, Imagine Dragons right, exists. Right. Like, up until the point that Imagine Dragons exists existed, Nickelback was the worst yeah. band. Well, I don't th- but you can only be the worst... You know, it's a superlative. Right. Like, you can only hold on to it until something better or worse than you comes along and then you can no longer be the best or but worst they're thing. not they're they're in no universe are they actually have they actually been or will actually be the worst band like you and i have been in bands that are way worse than nickelback 
<laughs> but uh, debatable. But, I mean, talking from like a subjective skill level and you know ability to make music. Like we don't have the ability to make music that takes off and is like professionally and culturally significant like that and, and gets just billions and billions of listens. Right. Uh, there's something significant about that. The reason people don't like it isn't because it sucks. The reason people don't like it is because it sucks that it's been overplayed and it sucks that it was like the, you know, just so pervasive and you couldn't get away from it. Like if someone, if someone just shot candy bars at you out of a cannon, you'd be like, candy bars suck. I hate this. Candy bars don't suck. You're just tired of being shot at <laughs> with candy bars because it hurts, you know? I don't know. I think it's fine. I don't know if I. I don't know if I All agree right. with that. You think it sucks? That's fine. <laughs> I just. No, no. I'm not saying it sucks. I'm just saying like I don't think I would. I, I'm trying to. I mean, maybe at some point I would think candy bars suck. But if you were getting pelted with them and they were hurting your body, you'd be like, I'm done with candy bars. I don't want this anymore. That's true. That's I don't true. want this situation with candy bars anymore. I don't know. <laughs> Do we have sponsors? Let's uh let's figure out our cut of the door. Yeah, this week's uh this week's sponsor is uh Chase Bliss Audio. Mm. Uh they I'm actually I'm actually kind of figured out I forgot that I have a touch screen computer oh, at home. Touch that screen. Um, so I'm like turned my computer into a freaking iPad, but chaseblissaudio.com uh, Chase Plus Audio is a brand with a digital brain and analog heart. Uh, they make pedals that mix digital wizardry with analog mm. goodness. Ryan, did, did you, you know just that? Make that up, or is that on their website? I'm reading their well, website. Damn. They the preamp mark the preamp mark two. They made a preamp baby. Yeah, baby. Oh, you say baby two? Now you have the. No, it says baby. It says we made a preamp oh, baby. Oh, it's a baby. It's yeah. I th I definitely think there should be a comma yeah, yeah. there, but um, I'm looking at their site. Like their site is so clean. I, I really I really dig their site. But um, you have their blooper I'm now, right? It right here in my hand, right now, Steve. How is it? How have you? I have been messing it? around with it. I've been sitting down on the couch at night, learning it and reading the manual and playing it through my little uh, like Boss Katana battery amp. I was I've been intimidated by this thing for a long time watching you know the various videos on it by knobs and like watch it get developed and whatnot I figured it out in like five minutes like it's not hard like if you know loopers it's not hard it just does some extra stuff that gets really crazy but also really fun and experimental like you treat this you can treat this like a regular looper and then you hit these two switches on the bottom and you get into like crazy modify the loop mode. So you can just use it as a regular looper and then for like your set ender or to like do some sort of freak out part or to build some sort of, you know, glitched out rhythmic micro loop or granular loop or whatever, you start messing with the other stuff. It's really freaking fun. Like there's one setting where you can uh, change the speed of the loop forwards or backwards. So you could have it go really fast forwards and then ramp it back and it slows down, slows down, slows down to zero. And nothing will play when it's at zero because it's just sitting there stalled. And then you start rolling the knob back to the left and the whole loop starts going backwards slowly and then faster and faster and faster. There's, there's two different banks of mods that you can do to your loop and you can combine them in all sorts of different ways. There's also uh, a sample setting on here that I think is a lot of fun. You can also, uh, because it's a chase plus pedal, you can make it do other things. You can turn it into a delay pedal as well. It does tap tempo delay. And then you can apply those freaky weird mods to it. So you could have a delay that goes backwards in slow motion and then is cut up by the other mod in a crazy interesting way. Uh, Good it's grief. a bunch of fun. It's a lot of fun. Yeah, I'm. I'm. I need to. I need to make the time to sit down and make the plan for how I'm going to demo this thing because, uh, I mean, there's a lot. Like all every time I do a Chase Plus demo, I earn my money because it is a lot of work to cover all that ground and to like <laughs> show what it can do. I. Th I just. 
But last time I did a Chase Bliss demo, I was trying to do all my demos shorter. I was trying to keep everything under 10 minutes. I think I'm just going to go half an hour on this thing. Mm -hmm. I've been doing longer videos now. I'm just going to go long. I'm going to make a long ass video out of this yeah. th out of this bad boy. Some sometimes uh sometimes a pedal just needs yeah. it. And all that to say Oh, also it can uh, be a chorus. You know, go check out Chase Chase <laughs> because of course yeah, it can. Of course. Of course. Can it be a can it be a wall? No, it can't be a wall. But uh, there's a, a knob right in the middle oh. called stability. And literally you turn it up and it like makes it sound like you're playing a dirty record. Like it starts introducing noise and like chorus hiccups and it's kind of random and a really fun effect all by itself. Like this thing is just chock full of all sorts of stuff you can do with it. I haven't even scratched the surface of the of the bank on the back yet. And I've already gotten so deep with this thing, it's stupid. It's definitely like a like if you're looking for something to keep you entertained in quarantine, you could probably spend a week or two just exploring the blooper for sure. You still there? There yeah, you are. Um, I yeah, no, I actually, I, actually, I am. Turns mm -hmm. out, I am. Um, I will say, I I do want to say rather. Um, that Chase Bliss is shut down right now. <laughs> um, as of March 25th, uh, they are not shipping because the state of Minnesota issued a shelter in place, but you can still go to Instagram and follow yeah. them. You can go check out their website. Uh, you can still order stuff. You just won't get it for a while. Or, you know, if you're like in my situation and you're still working and you're, you know, blessed to be able to do that, um, Start putting some money away, yeah. man. Like, Prepare you for know, it. this could be what I, I, I know there's definitely um, a lot of people out there who are looking for people to support um, when those uh, stimulus checks comes in. And Chase Bliss is definitely one that you should consider, yeah. you know, uh, throwing some money at. And, yeah, you won't get your pedal until uh, they come back online. But good grief, man. They they make some monster yeah, stuff. Yeah. So, uh, anyways, thanks for sponsoring us, Chase Bliss. Uh, if you're looking for pedals more creative than you are, the only option is Chase Bliss Audio. I mean, come on. That's top of the list of pedals more creative than you are. And don't, come on. don't kid yourself. You're not more creative than a Chase Bliss pedal. You just aren't. No one is. Just deal with it. Uh, going back to stimulus checks, I got a comment on one of my Harmony videos. And uh, the person was like, hmm, these things are $1,200? Man, I just wish I had, you know, just some sort of random check showing up at some point in my life that would cover that amount almost exactly. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> so uh, if you're looking for a way to spend your stimulus check, I mean, I can get behind it. I love my Harmony. They're $1,200, guys. Go check them out. <laughs> spend that check all at once on one guitar. Yeah. All right. Uh, this topic was sent by Noah Barnett. He says, if you had to choose a different instrument and give up guitars and basses, what would you choose? We'll say for sake of argument that you'd be able to play this new instrument fairly well right sure. away. Well, what what if here's what about this premise, Steve? A magic genie shows up when you're walking on the beach and he's like, Steve, I will exchange your current skill to play guitar and or bass with any other instrument in the world. You will just no longer play guitar or bass. You will now play another instrument with a with the same competence as you did with the other instrument. Like, what would you choose? Man. Yeah. With this, with the same, um, I think I would go, man, I, I, so I thought I had a choice, or I thought I had I thought I had this figured out. And originally I was thinking like strings, like violin or mm. viola, something like that. But then all of a sudden it dawned on me that I mean, I guess it's like if I want to impress my friends and family, it's still like violin or viola, like one of those two uh -huh. that are similar-ish, but not exactly the same. But then all of a sudden I had this thought in my head that like no dummy. The the correct answer is drums. I mean, if you want to be valuable to your local, you know, right music community, well, if you want to be in any band you, you want, then learn how to play drums. Really. 
Yeah, well, my thought is just like, well, what is... Because I guess I'm taking the way you're phrasing it as like, what instrument... Like, you that you would be able to play that instrument competently enough to play in front of people mm. and 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 the people that you were playing in front of would be like yeah you should definitely do that right, again right <laughs> well think about it this way though like, um what instrument would you pick if you wanted to make the most money and my immediate ooh. thought is if if i could turn back the the, the hands of time Go back to teeny drawing. And be like, hey, you really want to make money playing music? Here's a set of turntables and like a sampling bay or something like that. Oh go, my god! Go be a club DJ. You could be a millionaire. <laughs> oh, I know that's depressing, right? I, I don't know. I mean, you probably. I don't think that's really true. The, but, high, the, the uh-huh. highest grossing musicians in the world for like years and years now have been DJs. Yeah, but they're probably way better at being a DJ than you are at guitar. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's totally true. Uh, did you watch that? I forget what the name of the show was. It was about, it was like a drama that was framed in the early days of hip hop. Man, I wish I could remember the name of that. But there's a whole um, part like showing you what it takes to mix beats between turntables. And I was like, uh, no, thank you. I, <laughs> I don't have the skill for that. Like, that's a little bit intense. Like you're you're having to listen with, you know, two ears into one brain, two different things at the same time, and then sync them up and mix them in an auditory capacity and in a visual capacity, just looking at the records. Like it is like to be a, a legit DJ and make beats yeah. that way is pretty intense. It's not loose and sloppy the way I play guitar, that's for sure. Yeah, no, there's a lot of tightness and there's a lot of, there's some, um, some instinct. I'm sure it's all different now with, Um, you know, digital sampling and the equipment people are actually using now. They're not just, you know, laying down hot wax or whatever. Uh, but you know, the, the the core element of the skill set is, is pretty wild. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I think what would you go? Would you think you that's what you would go with is two turntables and a microphone? Uh, well, clearly I don't have enough skill to actually do it. Um, I think drums is smart. I wish I could play bass competently. Um, I've always been a frustrated uh, trumpet player, though. That was the first instrument I picked up, and I just didn't have the ability to make my lips do it right. Uh, I picked that up right. in the fourth grade, and I I stuck with it for months and months and months and I just couldn't make it work and no one was like no Ryan keep trying and when I said I I don't think this is working <laughs> out I don't think I should do this anymore no one no one was like oh no you're you're getting better everyone was like okay cool yeah we'll stop yeah. paying the uh we'll stop yeah. paying the uh the rental on this trumpet and return it right away you don't suck at trumpet you're pretty <laughs> exactly but I've always been kind of attracted to uh, trumpets but then it's also a really inconvenient instrument to play at home it's super stupid loud right yeah and, and I mean I guess that's what I'm thinking about too is like that's why I'm like well do I like strings versus drums yeah. like you know strings might not have like the same amount of and it's, I guess it's also like thinking about like well do I get to build on this yeah. right because like if you're if you were saying like you'll you have the same competence you have at your current instrument, but it's a different instrument, it's like well should I just pick piano since it seems like piano is the foundation to like all yeah, music? Yeah, piano is a really smart instrument to know how but to then play. That, I kind I kind of do wish I knew but how then to that's play also keys. Because there's a lot of fun stuff you can do with that. And that's but then that's also that's also like why I'm thinking about drums because it's like well drums is like the foundational like a yeah. rhythm. Of everything, yeah. you know. So, couple, I think those are a couple good choices. Um, non-standard instruments. What would you non-standard? pick? Standard? Like what's in the? Are you talking about like a like a bagpipe or something? Uh, I'm picking jaw, jaw harp. harp. I can play jaw harp pretty good, actually. Have you ever played one of those? 
No, I, I don't even know how to... I don't even know, really understand how they work. No, actually, what I would really pick is the didgeridoo. <laughs> it'd be fr- it'd be pretty fun to to rip at harmonica. Harmonica is a really fun instrument when it's used correctly. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, Dude, you'd be like Huey Lewis. Did you know Huey? Did you know Huey Lewis was a harmonica ripper or is a harmonica ripper? I know very little about Huey Lewis other than How um, dare you, sir? He like we now, I'm gonna make you listen uh, a, I'm gonna make uh, you aside, listen to Huey Lewis <laughs> one of these weeks. I don't know why that's what I'm saying. Like there's like the thing is is I kn- I think I know more about your likes and dislikes with music than you know about sure. mine. Not that I di- would necessarily dislike Huey Lewis, but I think I have more like I think my modern assumptions of the music that you have that you have not listened to prob- poten- potentially surpasses. No, I think it definitely surpasses like older music that you m- pr- might have assumed that I have listened sure. to. Um, that being said, my actual thought for album review is um, I feel like we need to list. We need to find something that like just came out to listen to at some. Yeah, point. Yeah, totally. We do need it. We do need that, to like, do something new. That. That might be like an artist we both know and maybe like we've listened to. Um, but um, and what got me thinking about this is actually as I was driving home. Well, we'll, we'll talk about it later. I don't want to get into it. But um, yeah, harmonic harmonica is a good yeah, one. Is. Absolutely. Uh, you want to hit this next ad? Yeah, this ad was sent by William James. Yep. Um, and it is a screenshot of some wall hangers. It says custom made guitar hooks in natural wood and leather handcrafted in Southern Nevada. Unlike most of our guitar hooks on the market, our hooks are made of dot, dot, dot. See the whole thing. The brand Um, is 143. And what we're looking at is like this bent bamboo, very Ikea looking guitar hanger, uh, with apparently, uh, leather, like inlays where the guitar is going to be held. And there's some clear, like, yeah, like things that don't make sense with the photo. One being these to be displayed in this photo. The hangers are put pretty much side by side, very close to each other. Where if you think about it at all, you realize you could never hang guitars on those because they would all be hitting each other's bodies. (laughs) That, that was the obvious issue that I could not find. <laughs> it's just, you know, it's a product shot. They can't, you, you wouldn't want to look at four, you know, correctly spaced hangers in a, in a square photo on Facebook. You just want to look at one of them. So someone made a creative decision on how to display these things. And I don't have a problem with it. Obviously, they're not going to hang four guitars that close to each other. My main issue with these things, even though they're handsome and they're modern looking, they're only going to work with guitars with a symmetrical headstock. Mm. It's because so, they don't, it's this, it's this okay. bent wood sort of, sort of thing. And you know, like a tele headstock is just going to sit in that really weird. And you're going to be resting it on the low E tuner or any kind of like, you ready to suck a, fa- you ready to suck a fat, you ready to suck a fat oh, one. You're going to prove me wrong. They sell three versions of this guitar hook. The standard guitar, which is what's in the photo. The ukulele, which I don't know what that one looks like. Presumably it's, yeah, just it's just small. Got, got, to be, got to be smaller. And and Telecaster style, which is an uh, which is a uh, angled guitar uh Interesting. Hanger. 143. So it's not it doesn't it doesn't rotate. But still then you got to um, you got to choose like what kind of guitar is going to be paired with that guitar hanger forever. Sure. I mean if you're really committed I'm just saying, to I'm just saying a look you got to have that look in your home aesthetic then I guess you just do it. Well dude the bigger problem is these are $60 what? a piece. <laughs> yeah no thank you or is it a string swing like they like are 12 bucks or something 
Yeah, they are molded plywood um, with a uh, veneer. So the veneer gives you your different uh, walnut, oak, cherry, or teak. You get a bunch of different fabrics to choose from, though apparently if you want Pendleton wool, you cannot get that in Telecaster. I'm looking at their shop now. Um, got a $600 rocking chair. And it, and, it, and it comes with your... Yeah, it comes with your anchors or whatever. This is definitely like high-end wood stuff. Um, <laughs> I don't hate this, I but I thought that was hilarious that the fact that I looked at it for so long and could not figure out, like, I don't get it. Like, what's wrong with this picture? <laughs> okay, I'm going to try to look at... What do you mean? The Telecaster style now. I don't see any difference in it. Or maybe the picture is not changing. The oh, picture doesn't now. change. There's, you have to go yeah, down to the picture. It's like bent funny. Go down to the gallery. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I, what if... This is obviously what if you a, don't a, know that you a need niche it. product. This is not for people who just want a guitar stand. They want something... Yeah, display yeah. quality for some reason, but I already I think string swings already look very handsome, or you know, the design similar to What's that. What's that? Like Which a string one? swing. Yeah, I think that I think string swings are fine, and they they do all the work that you need to do. Not just saying that because we've worked with them a little bit in the past. Well, um, we worked with them because I functional. liked them, and I told them that I liked them, and they're like, well. <laughs> Well, yeah, <laughs> but I just feel like that hook design is way better than this too. Like, yeah, it's got a leather bumper on it, but that's still like a hard edge wood underneath it. I don't know. I'm not into this design. Like if you absolutely have to have this aesthetic and you're doing like a design decoration thing in your house, then I guess that's what they're for. The freaking 60 bucks, man, for a hanger. Dude, they sell this, a, like they, single use, single guitar design use. Like you can't ever change the guitar on it if the headstocks vary. Like I don't, I don't, I'm not into it. They sell a hundred and twenty five dollar guitar stand. We're in the wrong business. And it is not a portable guitar stand. Got to click view all products here. Like it's just some metal pipes that are welded together. With some ball ends and the and some oh, wood. What? That's stupid. $125. Oh, but it this stand definitely gives off mid-century modern vibes. I mean, this is handcrafted stuff. Like I get it. Yeah. This this starts falling into that territory of like things that you don't need. But I mean, maybe this is want. stuff that I would probably make if I had this the ability to make it. Yeah, and, and it's like hard to be, you know, um, we have friends who make paint or who make like tons of like sewn materials, right. like handbags and, and whatever. And I always look at it and go like, man, that's really expensive. And like you said, like, oh, if I knew how to do that, I could probably make that for like 10 bucks. But the problem is, is I don't know how right. to make and that. And if you did know how to make it. Yeah, it might have the materials might be. I mean, we've argued about this before about all sorts of things. Like the materials might be ten bucks, or even the time to make it might be worth ten bucks. Yeah. But the fact that you know how to make it and someone else doesn't means it's valuable and means that you could maybe make a living making and selling it, which is just fine to do. I mean, some of this. Yeah. I mean, I look at this stuff that they're selling, and I'm like, yeah, I like a lot of this. I like a mid-century modern aesthetic, but man, it's pricey. I mean, I'm yeah. looking at this magazine rack. It's $110. I don't even have any magazines, but I want it. <laughs> <laughs> what even is a ma I, what is a magazine? Yeah. Dude, there's a $45 toilet paper holder. <laughs> Steve, are you wiping your ass with magazines? It, it doesn't even it doesn't even come with toilet paper. <laughs> oh man. All right, uh, let's set. Let's All right, set the this, next sponsor, and then do the next two things, and then do the last. There's, thing. there's no other sponsor, man. Oh, that shoot. was it. Just Chase We're Bliss. We're this episode, guys. If you're, a know. if you, if you own a company um, or work in a marketing department somewhere, and uh, you want to sponsor us, hit us up. Let's work something out. Let's 
that's how you get like us sponsoring like JJ's towing in in uh, Little Rock, Arkansas. We got. I'd do it if they if they want to get the word out through our through our show. I'd do it. We got hit up by uh, what is that League of Shadow Legends video game? Oh yeah, raid raid, raid League of Shadow raid. The one whatever. that like they they make people know. like read the script. And so every every channel yeah. that covers it yeah. reads this goofy script about video games. And I was looking at it like, oh man, maybe we should do it as a joke. Like they're offering us like 150 bucks or whatever. We could do it as a joke. Glenn did it. And then uh, and then I started to look through the process, and they wanted us to like like log into their site through our YouTube account. And I was like, ah oh, hell no, I am not doing anything shady like that to do a joke for 150 yeah. bucks. No freaking way. So we don't, we don't have 150 bucks. Steve is what I'm trying to tell you. <laughs> that is accurate. All right. This next topic was sent by Simon Jeffries. Uh, he wants to know, he, he wants us to talk about online gigs. Now, the actual live gigging scene might be altered forever now. People at gigs seem to spend ages looking at their phone. So just move the gig to the phone and people will stay home. I, um, I, I get it. I don't think we're there. Um, yeah, there's gotta um, be a huge. Have you, have you been watching it? There's gotta you, be like a huge cultural shift for people to be like, oh, I got to tune into this virtual gig. Well, the other side of it too is like, have you been, have you too, have you been like watching any like live performances? No. So I know, um, I watched one with, uh, with my wife. I, I watched the Jimmy Eat World, uh, it was, but it was only Jim mm. Adkins. So a lot, a lot of bands have been doing like where the front man or like the front man and the guitar player do like a performance, right? And I think that's kind of right right now all that live streaming can handle without you know that's our current state. Well, you'd of have things. to you'd have to have a um, really serious rig uh, to mic up and mix a band and then put it into a live feed, and it's completely doable. No, ex- it's completely exactly doable, but exactly. it's not ideal, and things can go sideways pretty quick. Yeah. What you would need is a is a competent. You, know, you need all the equipment. You need to run like all of the channels to a mixer. Run that channel out to uh, whatever your streaming device mm. is, and then run um, a room mic to to add a little uh, room effect. Do the same thing. So yeah, you could do it. Um, but I think most of the artists I'm I've been seeing are just like doing it as solo projects. So yeah, like if you're a big Elton John fan, uh, Elton John could live stream oh, sure. and at least make some money. I don't know how much of a cut the venue is getting. Um, but that's the other thing is like, how do you make money on this? Like if, if like how big of an artist do you need to be to say, we are never playing or I, or we or whoever like are never playing a show ever again face to face we will we will only do live right. streams and if you want an access code to our live stream it will cost you i don't know like what does it like if if a ticket to We're like, like the rolling like stones doing pay-per-view is, concerts here at this at this point right so that's what i mean so if like a ticket to the rolling stones is I, and i have no idea if it's like no, forget the rolling stones if if a ticket to a band that you want to see which definitely would not be the Rolling Stones, was like thirty dollars. Right. Like, would you pay? Like, how one? I guess the first question is how much of that thirty dollars goes to the venue? I don't. I don't know. Well, I think I think in a, s- a situation I, where, if you're being hosted by a venue that has the rigging and the tech set up and the ability to publish a competent live show, like they're they're earning their cut. For sure, um, right. But then, like, no, but, I think that I, I, I think mean, the biggest I just hurdle mean, like, to all it, of this is the audience. Like, is the audience there? Are people interested in like, oh, hey, there's this live yeah. show going on, and I got to pay fifteen dollars to watch it, but I'm gonna do it. Like, I I don't know if that audience exists right now. 
Like, are you gonna are you gonna pay yeah, fifteen dollars to, like, to watch, you know, uh, you know, some show going on at the Belly Up? When you no, exactly, and 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 even if you say like, okay, like a larger act that would play the Belly Up or the Casball, so like a Man or Astro Man or the Aquabats right, right. or whatever, like they're not getting a dollar a head, like they're getting something right, else, right? right? Um, but but how does that number change, like? when you're just talking about people trying to buy a live stream code. Right. The other thing is like, he says like people, people at gigs seem to spend ages looking at their phone. And to an extent that's true. But like, I find at least the last few shows I've been to when people are look, people do look at their phones a lot during like the opener yeah. or like during talking parts, but the rest of the time for better or worse, like a lot of people are just like, I went to, I've, I went to, or no, like I had a friend who went to uh, Red Hot Chili Peppers at um, wherever it was they played in San Diego. I think it was uh, Open Air, San Diego State Open uh-huh. Air Theater. That sounds about right. Who um, they freaking like were Instagram, Instagram storying like entire right, songs. Right. And for and for me, like I guess it like is both side. There's both sides of that, right? Because one side of that says, one side of that says, like, hey, um, I'm gonna like live stream this whole thing because um, I'm I'm at the show and I want to share the show that I'm at with everybody else. And then the other side is like, to me, is like, why would you do that? Like, pay attention to what you're freaking sure. doing, man. But I think like, from the perspective, like you're at the, the perspective show. of the band, like, don't get upset if you look out in the audience and everyone's like on their phones. They're, you know, they're doing the hashtags on Instagram. They're doing marketing for you. Like, <laughs> don't stress it. <laughs> yeah. Like, oh, I'm at this cool show. Yeah, they're not paying attention I, I, in that you know, moment. I think that- but th- it's their way of showing that they're excited to be there is that they're, you know, sharing with their online audience <laughs> that they're there. Yeah, it just, I mean, it's its variable. Yeah. I don't. I mean, I, I think know. that's something you, you think could, that it. could be done to help promote live shows and get people to concerts is if it was like a huge social media payoff for all the uh, all the influencers out there to be at a show and to live publish from shows, then everyone would be like, oh, well, I, you know, I want to build my following. I've got to go to shows all the time. And then there would be this whole audience of people right. who just go to all these shows just to, uh, you know, cover them on their social media feeds. And then, you know, the band's getting their cut of the door from all these people who are just there to, you know, the Instagram influencers or whatever. I mean... I think that's more viable for the future of music than expecting venues to all of a sudden be able to host live streaming concerts. It's to make it it's gotta it's gotta become right. like a a socially desirable thing to be at live music and to consume live music in any way that ha- it happens to be happening. And I don't think people sitting at home watching a stream is going to catch on because people don't brag about that experience, you know? Well, I just don't think there's really a market yeah, there, you know? I think, yeah, I think there's val. you know, nobody's, I don't think people are going to sit around and be like, oh man, I saw, I saw, uh, again, like the Rolling Stones or whatever, like, oh, I saw the Rolling Stones on their live stream in 2020 like no one's yeah. gonna brag was, about that i like, was in the first 200 people that got onto the stream i was there from the beginning that stream blew up too there was a, i was the stream was shut down after 10,000 people couldn't handle it anymore but i was there in the beginning man i was live streamer number 268 at woodstock oh, man, yeah, yeah my grandpa told me he he watched the live stream of, of Woodstock and he was the first to comment first. Like there was like three people after him cause they didn't see his comment, but he was the first one. <laughs> yeah. I, I just, I don't know. Somebody just posted this. Sorry. Apparently this is a, this was an April fools. Um, 
I don't know. Do you have anything else on um, this topic? I, I think the strategy for all musicians, I know it's tough right now uh, to not be able to play live shows and that's a source of income and whatever. But I, I say, don't give it away right now. Starve the world's population of music and art and live entertainment so that when this is all over, when we can reenter the world, people will be starving it for it in a way that they never have. They will be so thirsty for live music and any sort of in-person interaction with anyone that live music is just going to explode when, you know, there's a vaccine and we're all safe and can go outside the house and stop being, you know, cave people anymore. So that's, that's my quick pitch. I, 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 I just think it's really variable. You know, I think, uh, I think, um, some artists will be very, um, Oh my gosh! I just realized why I'm what I'm trying to do don't won't work. I knew you were doing something else. I'm so. What dumb. are you trying to do over there? No, I've been trying to live stream what I, on my end, but I think because I'm talking to you on the phone, it won't let oh me live gosh, stream. Oh my gosh, Steve! Which makes which yeah, makes knock sense. it off. No, I've been paying attention. <laughs> I've been paying attention. Sure, sure. Um, no, I think you know. I think for the bigger artists, the bigger artists, especially like if you're a Nashville centric artist. I think there's value in right, it. Right. Um, you know, when I watched the the Jimmy Eat World stream, it was in support of one of the venues in Phoenix. They've got, you know, links in the in the comment or in the description, so you can go fund me for like one of their local music venues. So I think there's value in that. I think for local artists, or for like if you're a small artist but you're still able to get together with your band for whatever reason, like right now is a time to take your normal practice sessions and like really practice your craft. It right now is a time to write something new, write new, write something new. If you're, if you can't get with your band, like write something yeah. new, you know, uh, come up with a, with a fun riff, you know, do, do the things that do some social media stuff, yeah. like keep it going. Um, the thing I was laughing about, which isn't really, um, isn't really, uh, social media related or isn't like live streaming related it's more April Fool's related but I still got a good laugh out of it was uh, Kiesel the game did you see Kiesel the game? I saw it posted somewhere I didn't check it out yeah it's uh, Jeff Kiesel has just arrived at the Kiesel custom shop on Monday morning select Jeff's first tasks and the tasks are bevel guitars quote call my guys ban the haters Take photo of arm. Oh <laughs> it's just an RPG where you get to be Jeff nice. Kiesel. Um, yeah, I I don't know. Like I've I've watched a couple of music live streams. I think my wife has watched more. I think maybe if we were home, or if we were both home at the same time, we would watch more of them. Um, I think it's really cool that to see artists who like. I mean, and maybe it's a thing about privilege because they can, but who aren't being like real sour about like, yeah, I'll, our entire summer tour got right. canceled. Um, but, but, you know, we're going to do, I'm, you know, we're going to put together some, some different content, you know, in the time being. Let's get, let's move on to this next ad and get out of here. It's been a long show. Well, I gotta do, right, housekeeping do housekeeping first, Ryan. You always forget yeah. about housekeeping. Sorry, sorry, uh, um, Patreons. I didn't this, mean to forget about you. Uh, this is a time uh, where we thank the people who support us on pay, 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 pay Patreon. Nice wind up there, Steve. Dot com. Yep, yep, that's what I do. Um, this is, of course, um, our Patreon. I tried to find a link to it and I couldn't because I'm dumb. Oh, patreon.com slash 60 cycle humcast. That's real this time. I'm actually yeah, looking there you at go. it. I'm reading it on a screen. I can tell you that we have lost patrons Uh-oh. this month and I'm not going to, and that's okay because I know everyone's yep. got stuff Pay to your deal bills, with. Guys, so don't worry about us. Got stuff to deal with. Deal, deal with those things. Um, but um, I do want to thank Joe Terwilligar. And Levi Litve, who have joined us at the $1 level, which is, of course, our favorite course. level is the $1 level. 
Um, if we could get every single person who listens and watches this show to support us at the $1 level, we would not have enough money to retire. Um, but we could pretend that we did. Um, I mean, it would be life changing for both of us. It would. Um, but uh, all that being said, at the $1 level, we will add you on to the um, little signage at the mm -hmm. end of the show that has everyone's name on it. Um, at the $5 level, I've got a little uh, merch pack to send you. And at the $10 level, you get in the little merch pack. And, you get to be in um, our secret group. Whatever. Ran you get to be in our secret group. And sometimes you get random things that company yeah send i us. actually threw a bunch of or that we bought or I that threw we a bought a bunch of stuff into uh the swag box this past week i was i was cleaning oh, up man. The, the space in here and i found a bunch of things that could go in there so there's some fun stuff in there there's like keychains and stuff like that yeah. you know little tools and you know guitar cleaners and whatever like it's fun stuff every now and then i might throw one of those cheap pedals in there too There we go. All right, you ready to hit this let's, last ad? Let's hit it and quit it. <laughs> this last ad was sent by Chris Hudzina. Uh, it's a made in Mexico strat. Needs work. Frets are low, but plays great. See picks. No case. Yeah, it, it, this thing needed a lot more than a case. Uh, 250 bucks. Uh, right off the... Yeah, that's the thing. I, I, could, I didn't see a prize. It's in orange. On this, but... Oh, yeah. there it is. 250 yeah uh, right off the bat it looks uh, like a kind of a handsome modified strat to me it's a, like some sort of gold body some sort of misty gold it has a mirror pit guard which i've always kind of hated mirror pit guards because they get so many fingerprints on them and they just kind of look ugly but something about this works for me it's got uh those kind of like orangish copperish like gibson knobs on it instead of uh, fender knobs and it has a maple neck but then as you scroll through the photos, you get to a shot of the headstock. And oh lord, this poor headstock. How does this bad thing happen to it over and over again and the person didn't stop? Yeah. Like they have it looks like they reamed out the holes with I don't even know what. Like a, they have like a pet woodpecker I that mean, they let <laughs> open up these holes do you think they just like pick i mean i want to say like they picked the wrong side but it's also like such a bad hole it's like they took a smaller drill bit and then by hand like carved the holes bigger were they trying right. to put base tuners in this because the holes are so big <laughs> like i think i could fit my my like index finger through these holes that's how big they are ah uh, they're not they're maybe not that big but they are i could you could definitely fit a pinky through yeah. there yeah also like it seems like there's a lot of glue or something oh, like trying to up. put this back together and and the real kicker here is this is either old enough that this is actually a um this is at least from the same era that the Squire series Stratocasters were yeah. being made. I don't know if this is one it of has them. That black logo. But this is the old all. all yeah, it's a 1995, uh, so it's definitely an older one. Um, I will say though, 250 bucks. I might pay that just to get that gold body. You know. Really? And then you get, and then you get the the you know the rest of the hardware with it, because I think that neck is just scrap at this point. You think you think that gold body is a? I guess I mean it looks original. I, don't know. I guess. I don't. I don't think they were making gold bodies back then, so it might be a refin, or they might have gotten it somewhere else. But I mean, you get a gold body anywhere, and it's going to be more than two two hundred fifty bucks. It looks a little rough. You don't think you could just like. You don't think you could just buy gold paint and make something that looks almost no. as good? You've seen how I paint. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> no, I'm saying for 250, for right 250, now, get a strap body that's loaded with pickups and hardware and everything. I think that's a fair price for 250. Um, but that neck is just it's over. They already they said that the uh, the frets are worn down, so it's not like 
It's not yeah. like that's even attractive to try to save the neck because you could dowel this and put a bunch of glue in it and resurrect it and it would be functional. Like like you could make that structurally strong enough again to, to hold tuner, to, to hold tuners. But if the But that's gonna take if some the frets, work, like some if the real frets work. need to be redone, this is a Mexican strap neck. You can replace it for two hundred bucks or whatever. Why would you go to that trouble? Yeah, but now you're four. If you're gonna pay two fifty for this, and then you're gonna replace the neck, you're like four hundred dollars deep on this thing. When you could just go on Craigslist, sure, and get a uh, uh, sage green Fender Strat for three hundred and seventy dollars. Yeah, I, th I think Mexicans and there's Mexican nowhere there's nowhere are on more the expensive friends. now than that. I think you're you're looking in the the mid 400s. No, no, I'm I'm lit for Mexican strass now. No, I'm literally looking at one right now oh, in Rancho you? Bernardo, sage green, 2003, uh, for 370. I I do agree. Like overall, the the prices have increased. Yeah. Uh, there is someone. Oh, that's a Squire too. Don't want to don't want to deal with that. There's another like uh, Sunburst 2004. Does it have a um, strat for 400? Maple next or rosewood? Both oh, okay. are rosewood. Yeah. So, of uh, the cheapest maple right now is a made in Japan. Oh, this is a Squire made in Japan, uh, but it's a Japanese Squire for um, two thousand or for th five twenty five. Mm. So the prices are going up. Um, but I mean, maybe they'll go back even, down again. Like you said like this is yeah, <laughs> this yeah this is maple neck sure, but. You're gonna have to do some work to make it even yeah, usable. That neck is over. Like this, this neck is, this neck is worthless. Yeah. This neck is next to worthless to anybody who is not comfortable doing work. I want, I, I don't have the space. I, I even if this was like a hundred dollars, yeah. well, a hundred dollars you could salvage would, the body. Yeah. But the neck, like, I don't have the tools to repair. I that. wouldn't pay five dollars for that neck. That neck is done. Um, yeah. But the body. I'm telling you, man, for 250, I might be tempted if the if this was local, just to get that body, and then you know, uh, I could swap everything from my strat over to it and not have to repaint my strat right now. <laughs> I mean, I I guess, yeah. but I feel I mean I guess the the real draw is that color. It is. You're assuming that that color is good. Um, I think I feel like you could get a strap body for um and again this is an older one i think you could get a strap body in gold for a better price and probably just use pickups that you already have and they would be an upgrade over the pickup oh, sure, that this is sure. going to come with you you might be right my, everyone find me links to guitar bodies that are cheaper than this and be, a better deal than this and i'll check them out I'm not saying that i'm actually going to buy anything i'm just saying prove me wrong Prove to me that I shouldn't buy this. You're gonna have like six. You're gonna have like fifteen builders hit oh, you up. Uh, like I'm finding gold strap bodies on Reverb for ninety dollars. Really? They're not Fender bodies, but <laughs> okay. I'll have to go window shop that tonight when we're done recording. You you can get an Aztec gold body from Guitar Fetish for ninety dollars. Yeah, but this, sometimes those Guitar Fetish bodies are pretty wild. I was looking at those it, though. It's the uh, it's the XGP series, so it's like they're better. Yeah. It's supposed to be their better. Well, maybe stuff. I'll maybe I should check that out at some point. While I still experiment like with painting this guitar body, <laughs> it might take me a while to get to the point where oh I can actually gosh. use it. You know. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks for watching the show, listening to the show, everyone. Um, if you're looking for some way. Well, we got one oh, more thing. Oh, you man. want to do the song, right? Yeah. That's right. Well, I'm, I'm just doing a little bit of closing statement before we play the song. I'm just saying, all if right, you if all you, right. Uh, this week's song. <laughs> if you want to do anything to help the show <laughs> uh, in ways that we've never asked before, I've been thinking maybe we should ask people to go rate the show on iTunes. We haven't done that in a really long time. We've yeah. we spent all this time building the show as a YouTube channel, and we've neglected the podcast side of it. And you know what? The guitar nerds are out there 
all talking big talk because they think they're the number one guitar podcast. But uh, hey, guess what, boys? You're not counting the YouTube views that we get. So I'm just saying get us some love on the iTunes and maybe we'll get bumped up in the rankings. Just saying. And then and we'll, uh, you know, we'll stick it to those guitar nerds over there across the pond. All right. Tell us about the song, Steve. This week's song was sent by Ian Ferguson. He says, hello, gents. This song is about cowboys on Yeehaw. drugs. This song is called John John Wayne Does oh Cocaine. Too much fun. Yep. All right. Uh, have a good right. week, everyone. Enjoy the song. We're not going to talk about it because we're not listening to it. <laughs> Enjoy quarantine. Yep. Stay, Stay grounded. grounded. Audacity so I can stop.